Good afternoon and welcome to episode six of the Dittmer Knittery podcast. I'm Bev and you can find me and Dittmer Knittery on the internet on Facebook and Instagram and right here on YouTube. Thank you for watching today. Thank you for returning viewers. I appreciate you coming again. Thank you for new viewers. I appreciate you tuning in. If you are watching and you like what you see, I hope that you would please subscribe and like, and I hope you come back again. Uh, today, I am um, going to talk about a few things. A festival that I mentioned on my last episode. I'm sorry, I have a hair touching my face. A festival that I went to that I mentioned on my last podcast. I'm going to talk about that with a little side note about shoppers. I'm going to talk about some works in progress and some finished objects. And I think mainly probably what I'm going to talk about is connections and, and those connections I make to you, podcasters and viewers. Really appreciate you. But first, let me talk about the festival. This is November 7th was an outside event in Paradise Gardens in Somerville, Georgia. And today, as usual, I will mention, um, I will, in the description box, I will put a link to anything that I'm mentioning during the podcast that needs a link, like Paradise Garden or any podcast or podcasters that I mention. So I went to Somerville. It's about an hour and a half, two hour drive. A fellow artist drove me, came to my house, picked me up, put my goods in his truck, and off we went on a beautiful day. It was a nice drive. Leaves were changing, so we drove north, not into the mountains, but we could see some um, mountains, uh, Georgia mountains, and we could see the leaves changing, and it was a, a, a nice drive. And we got there, and we began to set up, and other vendors arrived, and customers arrived, and it was truly a very nice, a great day. One of those days that um, while you expected it to be a good day, it turned out to be an extra special good day. And it did. Everybody was so glad to be there. That's the main thing about the day is, um, you know, of course we haven't had very many, if any, I personally have not had any um, art festivals or attended any arts or crafts festivals this year. So to be able to go and set up my booth and have shoppers begin to come in and buy was thrilling. Plus, like I said, everybody was glad to be there. Vendors and shoppers alike kept saying, hello, I'm so glad to see you. I'm so glad you're here. And, and we didn't necessarily know each other, but we were very happy to see each other. Everyone was so happy to be there. And um, the shoppers did shop quite nicely. I really appreciated that. And... If you have ever vended in this way, if you have ever sold, well, and maybe not just sold, but if you're an artist of any kind, if you're a fiber artist, crochet artist, knit artist, um, if you do pottery, if you paint, and you know whatever your chosen art is, shoppers and people who observe your art can have a couple of, they can have lots of different reactions, but a couple of, different reactions that I've noticed that I wanted to mention today. Um, there are those shoppers who are very appreciative of what they see and very complimentary and they take time to explain to you what they would like you to make next, the um, way you should go with your art. And Sometimes it gets really detailed and I listen and I appreciate any advice anybody gives me and I take it in and, you know, maybe something that, that later I think about that conversation and I do use advice people gave me. But for the most part, those shoppers who explain to you what you should make in great detail don't have very much interest in buying anything from you. And then those, the, there's those other shoppers who see what you have made 
admire it, buy it, and ask you to make more. Now, those are the kind of shoppers, of course, that I prefer, although, of course, I love all of my shoppers. I'm so happy to say I have shoppers, customers. Um, I sold about, I think I sold nine bags at the festival. That's amazing. I was so happy. But, um, and that leads me to talk about the kind of customers I was speaking about. One of my customers shops that way. She sees what I've made. She says, I want that. She gets it and she pays for it and she's thrilled about it and she wants something else almost like it. And so that, that's, you know, she doesn't say make me something exactly like this because I, I, my things are one of a kind. She says, make me something like this. And that's, I'm glad to do that. And she um, recently purchased a market bag. She ordered another market bag at that same time. She said, I really like this market bag and make me another one kind of like it um, in black and gray. And then she also messaged me while I was at the fest and purchased a knitted felted bag. So I counted that in my sale of nine bags for that day. Um, excuse me. I do have the work in progress that I just talked, excuse me, pardon me, for the customer that bought the market bag and then ordered another one. And what she said is make it black with gray accents. And of course, black, We'd rather not, but when she said with gray accents, I said, oh, okay, she's a great customer. She's a great person, and let me give it a try. So I ordered some um, Premier Home Cotton. This was not expensive. Black. And this is a worsted four-weight yarn, machine wash and dry. And uh, the other colorway I chose is, I just looked at it a minute ago, goodness gracious. The other colorway, the gray colorway is also the Premier Home and it's called Pewter. And this is what I have done so far, the bottom of the bag. And then I'm working it up to make the body of the bag. I am doing an interlocking Double crochet, which is what I did on the other bag for this customer, although the other bag was very different. I used this same stitch and I thought, well, that turned out nicely and um, that will make it something like the other one she has, which is what she requested, like something like it, only black and gray. So I'm quite, quite pleased with my progress there. This is um, only a few hours work. Doesn't take me very far to get this long. Doesn't take me very long to get this far in a bag. And I am using an H hook. Just went to my hook collection and pulled this one out because I'm making so many projects. Most of the market bags are H hooks. I'm making so many projects with H hooks that I had to go find another one to start this project. So, great customer, great project. The next work in progress I wanna talk about, I really haven't started the project yet, but I have started planning for it and I've started looking at yarns for it. And this is going to be a knitted felted bag, special ordered by Mary Ann of the Crotchety Clogger. And of course I will link her video and I will especially link the video, the live video, where she talked about what she wanted the bag to look like and why. And she told a lovely, inspiring story. And she said, even before the, she told the story, she said, Bev, I give you um, creative license and you make what you are inspired to make after you hear my story and here's my story. And she told a lovely story and it was inspiring and I have an idea. I, I think I know what I would like to do to make the bag for her. So I, um, pretty sure I want to use Knit Picks Palette Yarn, pardon me,
and I am probably going to get my knitting machine set up and make some of this bag on the machine. And what I intend to do is use two different colors of pallet yarn at the same time to make the bag. Now, um, the whole bag won't be made of just these two colors. There will be several more colors involved. So the combination of these two colors may be part of the uh, sky or part of the water, or I may use these colors in combinations with other colors, but these are the blues that I happen to have on my shelf and that I think are a good starting place for planning on this project. This uh, color on, on this palette yarn is sky. And I think that I will combine this with, I believe, uh, there's a, uh, I've been looking at the palette yarn and selecting colors, so I don't remember the color name, but there's another color that I've seen that I think if I combine this, combine it with this, will be um, along the lines of what Marianne described for the water. And then, you know, the water may get a little darker when I add this. Um, so I'm looking at the ordering the yarn and like I said, these are, this is palette knit picks yarn. This is a fingering weight yarn. I, I have had nothing but positive experience with this yarn. I knit with it. I hot water felt with it. I needle felt with it. It is a fingering weight which to me, so it's a one fingering weight. To me, it has the advantage over the worsted weight is that I can hold two skeins together and get a worsted. Two, two strands together, two strands of worsted held together produce a more heavyweight bag. So with two, strand of, two strands of this fingering weight, I can get a lighter weight bag and um, be a little bit more artistic with my color blending. So that's the plan for Marianne's Mexico Beach bag. And please be sure to watch Marianne, the crotchety clogger. She is among my favorite podcasters. I enjoy her humor. She has a beautiful smile and a great laugh. And she makes some... Um, row counters, and other items like that. They're very, very nice. Please do take a look at Marianne's videos. And this is how we make connections with podcasters and viewers. Another connection I made is with Ladybird Loves. Again, her link will be in the description box. Ladybird has quite a lot of videos. Um, all of them are good to watch. She is I believe in the UK, she does have a charming accent. She's fun to watch, fun to listen to. She does some great projects. She has a nice cat. Um, and she has invited me to be on a live with her this coming Saturday, November 14th at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm gonna let you do time conversions because I even confused myself when I tried to figure out what time that is where Ladybird is, so. 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time this Saturday, pardon me, November 14th. I will be on Lady Bird's Spotlight. And on that spotlight, I'm going to talk about these finished objects that you see here. So if you want to know about these finished objects you see in the background today, please turn in, tune in to that live. I have some knitted felted bags here and I have some Afghans that I have crocheted. And so I'll be able to talk about these items on the spotlight on Saturday. I hope you tune in so you can hear more about these items that I've made. And do watch, please tune in to and subscribe to Lady Bird's channel and um, watch her videos. You'll enjoy it. I'm sure you will. Also, 
I would like to talk about a couple other podcasters that I feel very much supported by. Two or three I'm going to mention. I've already talked about Marianne, the crotchety clogger, and uh, Lady Bird Loves. And um, I have mentioned before Kim, the crafty nomad. And I feel such a connection with Kim. I think she feels a little bit the same way. She has encouraged me. She and Priscilla of Distinctive Crochet really... Their advice was what tipped me over the edge to deciding to start my podcast. I got a lot of good advice and a lot of support, but it was those two voices that somehow resonated with me and their podcasts continue to resonate with me, the things they do and the things they say. And I watch their podcasts. I see them do and make amazing things. And then, then they make something even more amazing. Both Kim and Priscilla have made me feel connected to them, have inspired me, motivated me, and made me feel a part of this community. So that kind of leads me to another side note that I just wanted to talk about for a minute about what I think makes a podcast successful. And by successful, I mean I like it. So this is strictly based on my opinion, not necessarily based on monetary success or any other kind of success, but whether I think it's a good podcast. And of course, there's all different reasons for podcasts and all different kinds of podcasts. People podcast for corporate reasons. People, corporations podcast for profit. People pro podcast, people or companies podcast for personal gain to sell their items and people podcast for fun and people podcast for a variety of other reasons and a combination of all those reasons too. But why I like the ones that I like, why I talk about them as special is this connection that I keep mentioning. Now, some of the larger podcasts make an effort to connect and some of them are somewhat successful about it. And I think that would be an interesting to topic for the future about um, how successful some of these larger podcasts are at reaching um, those of us who would prefer a more personal connection. So those that I've mentioned already make me feel that connection. They provide content that's compelling. They're kind. They're interesting, they're fun. And the something we have in common may or may not be readily identifiable, but it's there and I appreciate it so much. And then um, these podcasters that are so good at making connections also provide a place for us viewers to connect to each other. So then you have this viewer connection and the connection with the podcaster and you're part of a community. I'm part of a community. And maybe I go too long, maybe I go on too long about that, but that's what's been on my mind today and that's what I decided to talk about. I'm going to mention two, kind of two more. Uh, another podcaster I've been watching for a long time. I've seen many, many of her podcasts and I've enjoyed every single one. And that is The Cat Lady. And that's C-A-T-T, -T, Lady, C-A-T-T -T, with two T's, Craft All the Things, The Cat Lady. Her name is Andrea. She, <clears throat> I believe she lives in Michigan, but she does craft all the things. And she has a really good time doing it. She seems to be a really down-to-earth person who's easy to relate to. She also is a yarn dyer. She dyes some beautiful yarn. Um, so go take a look at Andrea. It's like I said, the cat lady. There will be a link for her. Go take a look at her podcast. And the last uh, podcast I want to mention is a combination. The reason I said I'm maybe two is the last podcast I'm going to mention is a live podcast that's put together by four different podcasters who get together and do a live. Those four podcasters are Ginger, Kim, 
Julie and Kate. I will link each of their individual channels. And the podcast, the live podcast that they do together is called The Yarn Hookers. And it's great. Tune in the next time you see one. Hey, go back and watch some of the replays because they give advice. They give it support. If you are interested in any fiber, yarn, craft, fun, tune in and watch these ladies. I think you will enjoy it a lot. And so I think this is my longest podcast. I know this is my longest podcast so far. I am going to sign off and I hope I will see you again Saturday. Thank you for watching. Everyone take care. Bye-bye.